Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green combo deck featuring Myria, Scholar of Antiquity, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. This 3-mana three 3-3 three, three says we can tap an untapped non-token artifact we control to add a green mana, so this turns all our random trinkets into mana artifact. We can also tap two of those untapped artifacts to instead exile the top card of our library, and we may play it this turn. So if we don't need mana, we can also generate card advantage with Myria's ability. So the game plan is pretty simple, just try and deploy as many cheap artifacts as possible, maybe get some cost reduction effects in play as well, and then we'll get to a point where we can cast multiple spells in the same turn, and then our eventual win conditions here include cards like Aetherflux Reservoir, gaining a life until we get to 50 so we can one-shot the opponent, or we might get there with a glaring flesh raker making spawn tokens that ping the opponent as more artifacts get cast, although we could also get there the old-fashioned way just by attacking with a large creature suited up by Nettle Cyst, which we can also make unblockable with cards like Wedding Invitation. So there's multiple avenues to victory, but more often than not we'll get there with Aetherflux Reservoir, which we can also tutor up using our Inventor's Fair. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories, we've covered most of our win conditions already, then we've got a category of just cheap artifacts, some of these are free, so they can immediately make mana with Myria, which is pretty nice, and then later they can still use the ability to exile the top card. Then we've got other mana artifacts or mana creatures that can just add mana without needing Myria in play, which can be important if Myria gets removed, so it's easier to redeploy. Then we've got a lot of artifacts that draw a card or scry when they enter the battlefield, so these can also help assemble all our various engines. And then one of the most important categories are the cost reduction effects, or cards that allow us to generate more than one mana each turn, that way it becomes easier to cast multiple spells in the same turn. We've got a few taxation effects to slow down the opponent. Torpor Orb is also often going to be a one-sided effect since we don't have many enter the battlefield abilities on creatures, it doesn't stop our own artifact. And then we've got some protection effects with some equipment giving hexproof as well. And then we've got our card draw engines. Besides the one-shot draw effects, we have cards like Mystic Forge and the One Ring that can draw multiple cards. Saren's Steel Seeker can also draw multiple lands per turn whenever an artifact enters. So that's the general breakdown. Now for the deep dive, starting with our cheaper artifacts, we've got a Quarter Shield and Bone Saw as free equipment. There's a Mishra's Bauble, which we could sacrifice to draw, but often we'll leave it on the battlefield to generate mana. Then we've got Ornithopter. There is a small Thopter sub-theme in the deck, as we're also playing with a retrofitter foundry, and then Hope of Girapur is another Thopter we can potentially sacrifice and turn into a 4 4 construct, although it doesn't come up very often. And then Tormod Script, another zero mana artifact. Astral Cornucopia we can also play for zero mana, so if we exile it with Miria's second ability, we're fine to just play it for free, and then it can still tap for green or tap to exile the top card once again, but we can also sink additional mana into it and use it as a ramp artifact. And then the Sentinel can also passively gain us a bit of life, and the protection from multicolored can also come in handy. Then we've got a regular ramp section with Mox Amber, Delighted Halfling, Elvish Mystic, and Lander Elves can also help set up a turn 2 Myria. We've got Springleaf Drum, tapping another untapped creature to make mana. And then we've got some 2-mana ramp artifacts. I usually want to play those that enter the battlefield untapped, so they can immediately tap for mana. So we have Arcane Signet, Mindstone, and the Iron Crag. And then Ornithopter of Paradise also fits into our Thopter theme with the Retrofitter Foundry. Then we have File of Galadriel, our deck is good at emptying its hand, and then if we end up playing a card draw effect we now get to draw two cards with File out, so I've also found it to be pretty good. And then Relic of Legends can maybe use some of our legendary creatures like Myria to also generate additional mana. Worn Power Stone makes two colorless, and we do have a few colorless Eldrazi spells in the deck that will uh, require colorless mana to be cast in the first place, so that's where Worn Power Stone and some of the colorless lands will also be necessary. And same with the Hedron Archive, immediately making two colorless mana. And then Karn Legacy Reforged can also be nice if you get to untap with it, making a ton of extra mana to sink into artifact spells. And then we've got our card draw and card selection, with Candy Trail scrying two when it enters. We've got Chromatic Sphere and Star, which we can sacrifice to make mana and draw, so they kind of pay for themselves after deploying them initially. And then Unstable Amulet can also be a win condition, as we start playing spells out of exile to ping the opponent, although usually it takes a little bit too long to be a legitimate win condition. 
And then we've got a lot of artifacts that cost two mana and essentially draw a card when they enter. They provide a little bit of extra utility, but we're usually not going to sacrifice them. Instead, keeping them in play to make mana and potentially exile the top card. Lembas lets us scry one in addition to drawing as well. Sleeper Dart can maybe keep an opposing creature locked down. And as we said with the Invitation, can also make one of our creatures unblockable to maybe set up the kill with a Nettle Cyst. And then Howling Mine is also worth highlighting. This two mana artifact says at the beginning of each player's draw step, if Howling mine is untapped, that player draws an additional card, so it's often a symmetrical effect which will also draw the opponent extra cards, but now we can easily tap it down with Miria, and it turns into a one-sided card draw engine, as it's not going to be untapped during the opponent's turn. And then we take a look at our mana engines, Burgi making red mana whenever we cast a spell, could also sometimes play Horn of Bounty as a card draw engine, but Burgi is usually the way to go. Then a Cloud Key naming Artifact to discount our artifacts by one, same as a Foundry Inspector, and then a Semblance and requires us to exile an artifact from our hand to give those a two mana discount. Ideally we can exile an artifact creature so we both discount creature spells as well as artifact spells by two mana and then a sculpting steel can enter as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield, can sometimes copy a win condition but is also good to copy one of these mana discount effects. And then Jura's Familiar discounts historic spells by one mana, so also applies to our Planeswalkers, for instance, and to our Commander. And then a Traxos enters tapped, but we get to untap it whenever we cast a historic spell. So now we can maybe make mana with Traxos if we use Miria after untapping it, and then casting another artifact untaps it, making additional mana once again, so it can keep making additional green mana, or potentially we can use it multiple times to exile the top card. And then Ugin is also very nice to have on the battlefield as a discounts or colorless spells by two mana, so now we can play all these card draw effects for free and still maybe get an additional effect out of them. And then we can also use it as removal with a minus three destroying a target permanent that's one or more colors. We could also include Paradox Engine, which is somehow still legal on Arena, but in my experience as soon as you cast it our opponents tend to concede, so I've had more fun without it. And then we've got Haywire Might to deal with artifacts and enchantments that aren't creatures. Leather Armor, another cheap artifact that can also slightly protect our commander. We've got the Swiftfoot Boots for Hexproof and Haste. Defense Grid will make the opponent's counter spells and instant speed removal in our turn cost three more to cast, so that's great against control. And then a Torpor Orb to shut down ETB effects on the creatures, and there's not too many in our deck we're worried about. And then Lodestone Golem making non-artifact spells cost one more to cast, and most of our deck is artifacts, so it's going to mostly be affecting the opponent. And then we've got additional card draw engines with Goblin Engineer, which can tutor up an artifact and put it in our graveyard. So we're often going to get our Howling Mine, for instance, to start drawing extra cards. Or we can maybe get our uh, Icar Wellspring, which if we sacrifice it also draws an extra card. Or can go for some of our cost reduction effects or ramp artifacts if we need those instead. So it's quite flexible. Then the Steel Seeker is awesome, as it can reveal the top card of our deck if we play an artifact. And then if it's a land, we can put it in hand. If not, we can put it in the graveyard if we'd like. Oracle also lets us see the top card of our deck, which is useful when you're going off with Miria, so you have more information on when to activate the various abilities. And then we can also play an additional land each turn, which is useful when you exile multiple lands with Miria's ability. The One Ring, of course, a powerful card draw engine that can also protect us. Mystic Forge is one of the better card draw engines in the deck, as we can start playing them off the top of the deck, and especially with those mana discounts we can cast a lot of spells for free this way, can also tap it to exile the top card of our library to get rid of a land. And then finally our win conditions include Inventor's Fair, which can tutor up our Aetherflux Reservoir if we have enough mana for it, can also passively gain a bit of life. The Flesh Raker, as we mentioned, can start making spawn tokens to ping the opponent, and we can potentially copy the triggers from our Flesh Raker if we have an Echoes of Eternity on the battlefield, which not only copies the triggered abilities of colorless permanents we control, but can also make a copy whenever we cast a colorless spell, so that's also going to apply to all our artifacts. And then there's the Reservoir, as we mentioned, to gain life and eventually deal 50 damage to the opponent. And Nettle Cyst can also maybe suit up one of our other creatures to give it a massive boost in power and toughness. And then our mana base has a ton of useful lands besides Inventor's Fair. We also have Fomori Vault to maybe look for some of our win conditions or card draw engines. 
We've got a few artifact lands that can use Miria's second ability, such as Darksteel Citadel and Treasure Vault. These entering untapped is important. Then we've got a ton of colorless producing lands in general to help cast Echoes of Eternity and our uh, Glaring Flash Raker in the first place. We've got some fetch lands which can go after Stomping Ground as well as the occasional commercial district to surveil one. Can also get our Cinder Glade which is a mountain forest entering untapped if we have enough basics in play and then a cavern to make our commander uncounterable, and then plenty of lands that also let us either scry one or surveil one when they enter, such as the pylons, as well as cards like Jalfren Void and the Grey Havens, which can also help look for win conditions and maybe put lands on the bottom when we no longer need them. So yeah, the mana base has a ton of utility lands, as you can see, since our cards are mostly colorless, so we only need a little bit of red and green for Myria. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kozilek, the Great Distortion. So the plan's pretty simple, try and go off before our opponent can cast Kozilek, otherwise we're in trouble. This hand is a little bit questionable, in the sense that we have a tap land and no third land. But uh, eventually we can get Miria out, how good is Torpor Orb in the matchup? Opponent doesn't have a lot of creatures with ETB effects, so I think we take a mulligan. This time we don't have any colored mana, but uh, Howling Mine could be good. A Reservoir and Flash Raker are powerful, so I'll try it. And then we can look for a colored land. So say no to Sculpting Steel. A Lambos could still go for Howling Mine, also draws the opponent extra cards until we get Miria down. So it's a tough choice. I think I still Howling Mine just to get the cards flowing. Opponent with a mirror to start ramping. Alright, found a land but it's tapped. And then a Misty we can keep. And then Surveil. Golden Egg I don't need anymore. Alright, so next turn I can finally tap Howling Mine so it doesn't draw the opponent extra cards. And then we are potentially off to the races. I want to get Karn in play as soon as possible. Alright. So, step one, play Myria. And then I can still play the Flesh Raker. Could also play Sentinel into Flesh Raker, but then we lose out on the spawn, so I think I prefer this sequence. And then next turn we can keep going. And yeah, we've got most of the tools we need in hand, so I just need to hope our opponent doesn't do anything too powerful. They have 5, 6, 7 mana, so still a couple turns away from Kozilek. Automaton can pick up counters, that's fine. Can trump it with our spawn tokens. And a Natal Cyst, that one's gonna be a bit bigger. Okay, so next up, could immediately play Burgi. And then try and get Reservoir down, and we might just be able to win this turn if we get lucky enough. Sure, probably don't need my Colorless Mana anymore. So, play Burgi. And then Priority is getting Aetherflux Reservoir down. which triggers Burgi and Flesh Raker. Then we can play Iron Crag. Bonesaw is free. 
gains life, generates mana, and makes a spawn. And then I can play Karn already, but let's do Sentinel first. Now play Karn. And then I still have the mana for Engineer. We're at 49. So I'm one shy of just winning right now. Wanna put something with mana value 3 in the graveyard. Could make it... File or Sculpting Steel here. Let's do Sculpting Steel. And then I guess I don't have any artifacts untapped to activate Myria, but we can equip. Let's equip. Don't think it matters too much. Spawn token. And pass a turn. And yeah, as soon as I go up to 50 life, Reservoir's lethal. And I guess now with her opponent playing a non-basic, I could pay 50 life, although we would die before the opponent takes 50 damage. Alright, Cityscape Leveler is going to go after Reservoir, so I'm not going to activate it in response. And sadly, the Engineer cannot get Reservoir back, it's only mana value 3 or less. But I'm sure we'll still find a way to win with a Flash Raker. Howling Mind's also doing work. Alright, so step one might be to maybe copy something with the Sculpting Steel here. So let's make a mana. I can sacrifice any artifacts, including the Power Stone. Can copy Howling Mind, could copy... Lemboss as well. Can even copy the opponent's artifacts, although we don't get a cast trigger from Cityscape Leveler. But I guess getting a leveler is still reasonable. Although if we're trying to win right now, Lemboss might be the way to go. To get that scry and draw. Sleeper Dart I'll take. Triggers Flash Raker. Alright, we're hitting a land pocket, so tap 2 to exile the top card. Find a Mind Stone. Can also sacrifice it to draw, which at this point might be better than just uh, exiling the top card, since we have plenty of mana. But my artifact count isn't super high. Can also use the Vault here. And look for more artifacts. Cloud Key can discount artifacts. This replaces itself. Steel Seeker is also fun. But uh, let's go with Refractor. Again, mana is not really a limiting factor with Burgi and Flesh Raker. Find a Semblance Anvil. Can play Signets. And Oracle could be decent too. Guild Globe on top, which I can still cast. Draw Chromatic Sphere, which I can still cast. 
Could also pitch stuff to the semblance anvil, but I think I just want to cast it here. And then I can draw by sacking chromatic sphere. Ooh, Echoes of Eternity. Yeah, that would be a nice one to get going, so thanks to all the spawn we can actually cast it. So Karn and Globe. Cast Echoes. And this is going to be extremely powerful with the Flesh Raker on the battlefield. So they took away our Aetherflux Reservoir. But that just gave us the opportunity to go off even more. So now we can play the amulets. This one's not colorless, it doesn't trigger the uh, echoes, but chromatic star counts. And double the triggers. Get two chromatic stars. And yeah, before you know it, Flesh Raker's gonna close it out. And our opponent explodes. Good play, Scalding Tarn, thanks to Oracle, and keep going. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Riku of Many Paths. And we've got a promising hand, especially if Worn Power Stone sticks around. Can give us a nice mana boost for the One Ring and Mystic Forge. Turn one, I guess we do want to look for an extra colored mana. Or I could just fetch with Fabled Passage. Although I'm not entirely sure if I want to get a red or green, which is kind of the awkward part. But generally speaking, green is the priority. Uh, and Crystal Grotto could also fix her mana in a pinch. Same with uh, Pylons, I guess. And Commercial Districts I could keep on top. Play the Leather Armor. Turn 3 I was probably going to play Power Stone anyway, so I'm not in a hurry to play Myria. Opponent's got the Cold Steel Heart. And then play Power Stone. And next turn we have a few options. The One Ring is looking good. Alright, opponent's gonna blow up all artifacts, including our Power Stone and Leather Armor. So that's a bit of a setback, but we can recover with the One Ring, although I don't get to activate it right away. So maybe Mystic Forge makes more sense at the moment. And then hold on to the Surveil, which is good alongside Mystic Forge. Do we want to draw a Golden Egg? Not really, so I can get rid of it here. Could have waited until end of turn as well. But maybe there was a zero mana artifact on top. Opponent's now missing double red after blowing up their own Cold Steel Heart. Dance of the Tumbleweeds can get a desert. And now Glimpse Decor gets a forest. Alright, so opponent's ramping nicely. Found a free artifact. That's always nice. And then could play the One Ring and activate it. Don't really want to draw Treasure Vault, so let's get rid of it. Mindstone. Could also be decent. Maybe go Myria plus Mindstone here. Do have to tap somewhat carefully. Prismatic Vista on top. So can play Myria and then surveil the land into the graveyard. And a halfling's coming up. Don't think I need to sag Bobble yet since it makes a mana for me at the moment. And there's Riku. And now a Null Elemental Blast to destroy my Multicolor Permanent. That's too bad. And they found a Cornucopia. Okay. At least Inventor's Fair is gaining life and can eventually tutor something up. Swiftwood Boots to protect Miria going forward. So I actually have the mana to replay it. And then still play the Boots and equip. That seems fine. Okay, 
Ornithopter on top. Could play that as well. And then Bergie will have to wait. But I'm happy to draw it. And boots on Miria. And pass a turn. Alright, that was a decent turn. Still have our one ring. I'm being patient, maybe a little bit too patient. But Mystic Forge is doing a good job providing value in the meantime. Okay, so step one might be to just surveil with the pylons, get rid of the lanes. And then play Bergy before we play a Guild Globe. Draw the hope. An idol cyst we can play. Good cornucopia for zero. Since I don't really need the extra mana from it, and it still triggers Burgi, makes mana with Miria. Sculpting Steel. Now could Sculpting Steel copy Mystic Forge in case it gets blown up? Familiar coming up. Can cast it. Play free chromatic star. Hidden archive I should be able to play. So Burgi is putting in work. Free Hope of Girapur still makes mana. And then I can activate Miria's author ability to exile the top card. And cast it. Although I might want to play this Signet before we shuffle. Loads to Golem. Taxing the opponent could also be relevant, even though it will tax the Engineer. I think we have the mana for it, so that works. Ooh, Flesh Raker is excellent too. And I have a Colorless left from Mindstone to cast it. It does cost an extra mana because of the Lodestone, but it's gonna easily pay for itself. So we're definitely doing it. Although I'm kind of just waiting for the opponent to blow everything up next turn. And we found Reservoir, so that might be the final piece we need. Also can't forget we can equip one of our creatures and give it haste with uh, boots. So that's still an option. And with the invitation we can even make it unblockable. Our opponent has a Commandeer, that's what they were waiting for. So that's gonna steal my Reservoir. Okay. I think we'll be fine. So I can still play the One Ring, and then we just wanna suit up a Nettle Cyst here in order to uh, attack with it. So this now is 17-17. Yeah, I can draw with a one ring. A vault on top. Can also shuffle by playing the engineer. What do we put in the graveyard? At this point, 
maybe a howling mine land on top. All right, so I may be a little bit short of winning. Can still activate Mystic Forge, get rid of the top card. Finds Defense Grid, that pays for itself. So now I might get there. Can play Atraxos, although at this point if I move the boots to the Germ and sank the Invitation, that's an attack for 17 exactly. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Yuri. We have a Torpor Orb. Is that going to be relevant in this matchup? Maybe. Doesn't stop Yuri from growing when they sacrifice permanence. And then we have Lodestone as a taxation effect. This hand still feels a little clunky to me, and Torpor Orb doesn't directly stop the opponent's commander, so take a free mulligan. This is a bit better. We have our Aether Flux Reservoir and one ring to draw. Can start with the Sentinel. So now we just need to find a third land and we're off to the races. If possible, hang on to the zero drops until after we play Reservoir. Ooh, Echoes of Eternity could be great, but might be a while before we get it down. Alright, so we don't have a third land yet. So that could be problematic if we cannot get our commander down. At least I can immediately protect it. And a Vermin Gorger is next. And we found a Grey Havens, perfect. Still possible that for one mana they can answer Miria. Let's see what's on top first. Another land I can keep. Yeah, I'll uh, play Miria and then hang on to Ornithopter Mox Amber. Unless we want to immediately play Aether Flux Reservoir this turn. I think just equipping the boots is fine. And can tamp the boots itself. Alright, that worked. Pass the turn. And then Sentinel holding off Yuri as well, thanks to the protection from Multicolored. Point's gonna steal it. They've had enough. And then sank it to the Gorger. And now Edict oof, hits Miria. That was very painful. Ornithopter could have prevented this from happening. So that feels bad. But was not expecting the 1 2 punch. So how do we recover? Probably one ring to draw. Although I can draw right away. get to untap. Finding an Iron Crag. Still fine to activate the One Ring. Found our land for turn. Could play Aether Flux Reservoir. Although now if I play Iron Crag we have the mana to deploy Echoes of Eternity, which is going to be pretty sweet next turn. So let's try that. And then just pass a turn. Odin might have a handful of removal or act of treason effects to steal my creatures. Or they're just waiting for me to play Myria to take it out. Sculpting Steel wants to copy Aether Flux Reservoir if possible. So for now, still probably want to draw with the One Ring. Although I did not want to tap my Grey Havens, so luckily drew another colorless source. So I can still deploy the uh, Echoes, but yeah, that was potentially a pretty big setback. So now I can still play the Echoes. Question is if I want to play Ornithopter right now. I guess it's fine just to get some blockers out there or I can hold them for reservoir purposes. I'll just play them. But can wait on Mox Amber. And yep, opponent can't wait to steal my Ornithopter. 
sacrifices it. And might be fine to trump here, even though Ornithopter could represent a mana. I guess we will gain a bunch of life with Reservoir next turn. Yeah, fine. And our opponent's gonna connive. Alright, so... Take some damage. I guess the trigger gets doubled by Echoes. I did not think of that interaction. So we definitely need to get this Reservoir down. And then once we do, we should be in pretty good shape. So now I don't care about Colos Mana as much. Sculpting Steel, copy... Reservoir. And copy it again. Four Reservoirs on the battlefield and our opponent scoops it up. Would be able to play Tormod Script, Mox Amber, and then, uh, yeah, with four Reservoirs on the battlefield, we can easily keep up our one ring and might even have enough life gain to just win the game right now. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Nethroi, a reanimator deck. We have a decent hand. Turn one Halfling. Can set up turn two Myria. And I even have some zero mana artifacts to essentially generate mana for us. But don't need to reveal those yet. Right, turn one a Guide of Souls can be nice. And then next turn I could already play a Mystic Forge. Fiend Artisan can tutor up more creatures. And a Jalfern Void. So, can start by playing Mystic Forge. And then see what's on top. Karn. So, if we want to... Keep Karn, I can just draw into it with Prophetic Prism. That seems okay. And then Rootbound Crag, I could get rid of now by scrying. And a Semblance Anvil coming up. So can't quite cast that one with Mystic Forge, but can play a Signet and pass, or hit for three. Shield is three mana to equip, so we were a little bit short there as well. Now a Nyx Weaver to keep milling more cards. And a Defense Grid on top. Essentially cost me one mana to deploy. Could also pitch Karn to the Anvil so we discount both creatures and artifacts. Which I can also get behind and then uh, I'll be able to play the defense grid for free. Now a land I can get rid of with Miria's ability since I haven't played land for turn yet. And then play one mana Power Stone. Seems good. And we'll use the Halfling since I can maybe use my artifacts for Miria's other ability. So I haven't played land yet. Can use Mystic Forge maybe to get rid of the land here. Now Fabled Passage. Can also draw into it with Chromatic Star. And then hope there's more artifacts on top to keep going. Play our free Golden Egg, draws into a free Spring Leaf, another land on top. I can also exile with our author ability. Another land. Alright, we might be at the end of the line here. Alright, still get a Candy Trail and a Foundry. 
I'll keep on top Sleeper Dart as well. So I'll go Foundry first and then Sleeper Dart. Draw Wedding Invitation. Let's see what's next. Free Mindstone. Alright, so we're kind of doing it. Sculpting Steel can copy... What do we want to copy? Uh, semblance Anvil, I don't have anything to pitch. So, could just be another Mystic Forge in case they destroy the one in play. And then we can still activate it to get rid of the top card. Buried Ruin. We can Exile. You can also sacrifice a sleeper dart to keep something tapped down. Another land on top. And another land. Okay, so this is probably my last attempt. I right, can still play the chromatic sphere, file. So we're back in the race. Thanks, all the land, which I also don't want to draw next turn. Free bobble, free hope. Whenever we think we're out of cards to play, our deck delivers. Free bone saw, free ornithopter. Inventor's fair would be a decent draw for next turn, admittedly. So I can just equip a bone saw and attack for four. These will all be gone, but Inventor's Fair will stay, and then next turn I can use it to maybe tutor up Aetherflux Reservoir, which would have easily won us the game last turn. And Druid can mill more cards. I appreciate our opponent's patience while sitting through that turn. I realize this is maybe not the most fun deck to face when you're taking five minute turns. Alright, so step one, free Tormod script, free Cornucopia. Once we're out of cards to play off the top, I can search with Inventor's Fair to get Aetherflux Reservoir. And then, yeah, I'm pretty sure we can just win this turn with all the mana we've accumulated. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Ivy, Gleeful Spell Thief. A very scary commander, usually a mutate kind of combo deck. That can go off very quickly, our deck doesn't have any interaction, so we just have to hope to somehow combo off before they do, which I think our deck is just a few turns slower. Uh, that being said, I guess we can try a hand with Aetherflux Reservoir, still missing kind of a card draw engine, other than Myria, which is nice, but takes a lot of resources to draw one extra card with it. Karn's not bad, so that can give us a huge mana boost. And for now we can surveil, turn to Iron Crag, turn three Hedron Archive, try and get Karn out there as soon as possible. Do I want a fetch land? Not especially. Hang on to the shield as a way to maybe trigger Reservoir. And there's Ivy. Can they immediately target it? They can. Ether Tunnel. So their stuff is unblockable. Okay. Play the Archive into Boots. And then maybe next turn we can deploy Miria with Hexproof. Ancestral Mask. Yeah, that's going to be a very fast clock, so I don't think we'll get to untap with Karn. We're at six. So what's the best I can do here? Can name Alf. Play Miria, and then I have one, two, three, four, five mana afterwards. Can play Reservoir, play Shields, but that's not gonna gain me enough life to survive. But I also can't think of anything I can draw that really saves me here. So yeah, I think we're just dead. But I guess we'll uh, still play it out. 
And then Reservoir versus Karn. I guess we'll go for Reservoir, see how much life we can gain this turn. All right, 13. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. Can tap two to look at my top card. And it's a treasure vault. All right, GG's. As we suspected, Ivy is just a little bit too fast for us. And Ancestral Mask especially is a very fast clock. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing an equipment deck, a classic Sir Gwyn. We have a reasonable hand, it's a little slow to get going perhaps, but I'll keep, can surveil turn one by getting district. The one ring's always decent. Turn two, golden egg, turn three, maybe wait on Miria, and can play their Nettlesist or Inspector. Opponent's got the Signet. And a Steel Seeker is always welcome. So we can play that on turn two, even though there's a chance it gets removed. And then next turn trigger it when playing maybe a Foundry Inspector. It's going to be Bonsri's Lieutenant for now. And we found Reservoir. And a Haywire Might if... I keep my Inspector alive, I can play it for free, but finding a land is probably more important. And then Lieutenant is going to hit us for four. Now a White Orchid Phantom blows up my land, can get a Mountain. Not a disaster. And Midnight Reaper, so there's definitely a night theme happening here. So take four. And then the best way to keep developing my mana is probably with the Familiar. And then I can play a free Golden Egg to maybe keep hitting more lands with the Steel Seeker. Cloud Key might be a little overkill since we already have a two mana discount for artifacts. Making it three would be fun, but finding a land is probably more relevant. And then I'll first trigger Steel Seeker and then draw. Found a land, perfect. So we can still play a Nettle Cyst or even Sculpting Steel, copy one of my discount effects. I'll keep an Inventor's Fair, which I can draw with the Steel Seeker. And then between Familiar or Inspector, I guess Familiar is probably better. Reveal the lands. Play free Nettle Cyst. And yeah, we're kind of doing it now. I reveal another land. And next turn I can play a one mana, one ring. Alongside Reservoir. With Oracle we can see more cards. And I haven't even deployed my commander yet. Circle of Loyalty makes sense in a Knight deck. So we're going to take a bit of a hit. Destroying the opponent's creatures also feels bad with a Lieutenant giving them tokens and Midnight Reaper drawing cards. So I'm just going to take it. Might be able to win next turn or at least gain a ton of life with Reservoir and then we'll have the One Ring for protection. So how do we want to start? Maybe with a Reservoir, so I can gain more life, or with Miria to make more mana. I guess I can go Reservoir into Miria. Reveal a land. And then now we want to get Oracle down. Of 
cornucopia on top. So can uh, exile that with amulet to be able to play it, or we can fetch it away with Fabled Passage, or I can use Miria's second ability to exile it. So I've got a few options. I guess we'll use the second ability for now. And then play that for zero mana. Can keep a Foundry on top since it's cheap enough to play. Play the Unstable Amulets. Can just use the ability here. Play Foundry. Draw the Mirex. And Boots on top. So next up, I can still play two lands this turn. Do I need to draw the boots? Not particularly. So let's shuffle with uh, Fable Passage. Candy Trails a little easier to cast. So. Play a Candy Trail, play a Land of the Top. Arcane Signets. We can also draw into with the One Ring, and then still cast for free. So we have options. I'm at 38, can we get to 50? Alright, opponent scoops it up. But yeah, between Candy Trail and Signet, we get to see a bunch more cards, and then there's a chance I can just win the game right now with Reservoir. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Cridal. So opponent's gonna be sneaking some rogues into play. And uh, what do we think of our hand? Ugin's a little pricey, but we do have some ways to maybe help make mana or discount it. So I'll try it. And then turn one, Chromatic Sphere. Found a third lane, that's good. And a Deep Cavern Band's gonna have a look. Could go after Burgi. Then we can still play Cornucopia for X equals one to at least uh, do something proactive. And Defense Grid is not bad either. Could play it now to make counter spells more awkward for the opponents, but it's not the most mana efficient play. And now a Curious Obsession on the bat to start drawing. That's a good one. Eventually Ugin can blow it up. But that might be a while. Take our turn, and then Defense Grid plus Refractor, if we're afraid of removal from the opponent here, as opposed to playing the Familiar and having it answered. Okay. And now a Coastal Piracy, so they're getting to draw two cards now for hitting us. And a land. So how close are we to deploying Ugin? If I play Miria, I have five mana afterwards, so just a little bit shy. But uh, I'll still have a decent turn lined up. As I could play Miria into Familiar. And then play a one mana Ornithopter of Paradise as well. And then I guess we could activate Miria again. But having the blockers for Deep Cavern Band could be more useful. So they undoubtedly have an answer for Miria. Put in place Cridal. Band attacks. So we can block it. 
opponent draws two. And then we probably see a removal spell. So yeah, keeping Ugin alive when all their stuff becomes unblockable is going to be tough as well. Alright. Looks like we get to untap with Miria at least, but Seiju answers Coastal Piracy as well. So, step one, play Ugin. Blow up the Deep Cavern Bat. Get Bergy back, and then probably want to exile the top card. Find a land for turn, and then I can still play Bergy and channel Boseju. That should work. So we've shut down some of their card draw in the meantime, although I guess the Cat Geist could still draw them extra cards. And then, yeah, there's no sense in keeping blockers back with Cridal out, so we're gonna lose Ugin. Burgi down. So Miria needs to try and find some other card draw effects to pull us ahead to keep up with the opponent's card advantage. Keeping blockers back maybe would have made it harder for the opponent to decide between taking out Ugin or drawing extra cards with the Cat Geist. But yeah, opponent's got plenty of removal here. Play Miria. Can play the Might for free. Can play Sentinel. Although maybe we'll wait and see if we can find something that rewards me for casting my spells. Like a Steel Seeker. And find a Vault, which is pretty good too. So it can activate this if I discard a card, which I currently don't have. So can maybe exile another top card, or I can just pass with more blockers available. Yeah, let's try it. And an archive I'm a little bit short of casting, sadly. Okay, pass the turn. And then at the very least we can use Vault next turn to go digging. Opponent gets to draw with the Kantgeist. I guess they do have a demolition field if they want to blow up my vaults. So maybe that's what they're looking at now. Thieving Avon, that's fine. And Gix, so they must have drawn that afterwards. So no demolition field at least. A Lemboss I may as well play, my trigger Steel Seeker, and then we can discard whatever we draw into. And we're not worried about counter spells with defense grid. Mishra's bobble. I can take it or leave it. Although I guess it's a Steel Seeker trigger potentially. Found a land. So play bobble. Our deck is very good at enabling an opposing ledger shredder. That's for sure. Find another land. So now we have plenty of things to discard to the vaults. And what do 
we get Torpor Orb, not that great. So it might be the Inspector to discount artifacts even more. Find another land. And time to use Myria. Free Mox Amber. Alright, opponent's got an Otawara. I guess that one gets around to defense grid. Okay. So, do we have a response? I guess we want to make some mana here. And then we can just replay it. Find the land. Play amulets. Find a mind stone, which I could keep on top and then play for free using the amulet, perhaps. Find another land, so yeah, Steel Seekers putting in work. Although we are slowly running out of things to do for turn. How about a One Ring? Don't mind if I do. And a Bone Saw at this point may not be necessary. Alright, so I can still play a land for turn. Can activate the One Ring. Let's maybe start with the One Ring. Alright, and then I can still fetch my Surveil Land. And now we're looking for some of our finishers. Can activate Vault again. Point's gonna blow it up now. They've learned their lesson. Got a few basics left, so yeah. What cards do we want to find now? Echoes, Aetherflux Reservoir, Mystic Forge, and then a Flesh Raker would be a good one too. So those are at the top of our list as ways to actually close out the game. So One Ring protects us this turn. So our opponent keeps up all their mana. Alright, step one. Probably activate the One Ring. Finding a bunch more lanes. Time to activate Myria. Find a free Sleeper Dart. Ooh, nice. Found our uh, Inventor's Fair. That can... Maybe go after Reservoir. Now our opponent does have enough mana where they can potentially counter something through Defense Grid. Although it's still probably worth a shot here. So, play Inventor's Fair. Try and get Aetherflux Reservoir. Opponent does have a mana drain, that's unfortunate. Okay, so we'll have to find a way to get it back out of the graveyard, which there's a few ways we can do that. For now, let's keep going. Find an Oracle. Sculpting Steel on top. Could also copy the One Ring to reset it, which is not a bad idea. Treasure Vaults, since we get to play an extra land here with Oracle. And then a Halfling, I don't really need. Can play the Sculpting Steel.
core mod scripts I also don't really need to keep. But it is free mana in a way. Flask on top. Cast that for free and found our Mystic Forge. That's excellent. So definitely keeping it. And then we can play Mystic Forge. So now we can start casting artifacts for free of the top. Keep going. And draw the land with Steel Seeker. Find a cavern. Can play Spring Leaf to draw into it. And then, what else can we do here? Activate the One Ring, or I can just get rid of it with Mystic Forge. Play a free Guild Globe. And there's Buried Ruin, so that's how we can get our Aetherflux Reservoir back. And Echoes as well. Alright, so I can maybe call it a day here. Play Elvish Mystic. Pass a turn, we're protected by the One Ring. And then next turn, Buried Ruin can get stuff back, and then we still have plenty of cards left in library to win the game. So discard some of my lands. Opponent does have the mana, drain mana. Hopefully there's no Cyclonic Rift incoming. Solitary Defiance, rewarding them for attacking with a single creature. But there's still the One Ring protection, thanks to Sculpting Steel. Now we have to be extra careful to make sure they don't counter my Reservoir again, but with Echoes we can copy it, so we have a bit of insurance there. Still have the Flesh Raker in our deck as well as an extra win condition, so not super worried. Goblin Engineer could be fun too. So try Echoes of Eternity. And then Sag Buried Ruin. And get Reservoir back. And when we cast a spell we copy it, so that's good enough for me. Opponent did have another counter spell. But we still have our copy. Alright, so let's keep going. Can exile the engineer. Find a candy trail. And now we also double the triggers with echoes, so reservoir is not gonna take too long to win the game. And then happy to keep all of these on top. It's a lot of scry too from a single candy trail. And now I guess Nettle Cyst could also be a win condition, especially with the uh, wedding invitation if we haven't tapped it yet. Can allow one of my creatures to attack unopposed and just win the game since our opponent's at 12. But may as well win with Reservoir as we've gone through the effort of getting it on the battlefield. Our MVP might have been Steel Seeker this game. And then technically we should tap the file for mana before we get the author copy since it's legendary. But yeah, opponent has seen enough. We're at 49. One more spell gets us to 50. Awesome. So this time it took a little bit longer to set up all our engines since our opponent had quite a bit of disruption. But
but yeah, eventually, thanks to Steelseeker drawing extra lanes, the One Ring drawing a few cards, and then Defense Grid protecting us from those counter spells, we eventually forced our uh, second Reservoir through for the win, and then Echoes of Eternity also showing its worth, copying our spells and copying our triggers, so that can also be a lot of fun, especially with the uh, Reservoir or Flesh Raker. So there's a few ways our deck can close out games. There's also the Nettle Cyst, which we can potentially make unblockable and give haste to. So there's multiple avenues to victory, but the general game plan is always the same, just trying to accumulate a lot of artifacts on the battlefield to make mana and draw extra cards, and then sooner or later you're gonna stumble into a victory. Now, Miria may not be the most competitive commander, since, again, it takes a while for all these engines to get going, and if the opponent has a lot of disruption or a particularly fast start, they can uh, certainly beat you before you get all these cards online. But it's still a lot of fun to try and solve all these puzzles and get Miria going. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.